and I got actually got one one half decent image, but it's not really great. But it's uh, I'm uh, you know still working with my equipment. I've got a I bought a whole bunch of stuff and uh, getting used to everything. So, but, what uh, is the uh, the SciTech controller that you bought? Does it look something like this? Uh, let's see. Hold on. It's gonna... not SciTech. It's OnStep. Oh, OnStep. Yeah. I thought you said SciTech. Uh one of these things for a controller no 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 um SciTech is uh for the mesu i think for uh mike's uh controller oh mike uses that maybe that's what was confusing i think so yeah for his mesu mount that makes sense yeah but it's a <laughs> You, you were having um, success with Ecos and K-Stars. Some trouble connecting, I thought you said SciTech to mount. So, but you, no, you, no, no, I, I think, I'm, I don't know. I may have, uh, I think I asked Mike this question if he had trouble with the SciTech. Uh, I, mean, I don't know, it's, um, but anyway. So you have a um, Lost, Mandy, Lost Mandy mount? Yeah, I mean, so, the the medusa is is a, is a fantastic thing <laughs> it works really well uh so i can i can now set up in five minutes and 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 i'm pretty much done with it and uh so it's so so nice to hook all the wires into one place and you can just you just hook it up to your to the stuff that's right nearby uh that, right. That's kind of cool. so that that really makes it very efficient and uh last night i finally got my focuser working very nicely so i've got this auto focuser and it came with a bracket that didn't, did not fit. So in first instance, because I wanted to get going, I just got my tin snips out and cut a piece of uh, sheet metal and drilled some holes and voila, it was up, but it was kind of flopping around. Um, I mean, it was attached also to the, to the flex coupler of the motor and so on, but three points is just not enough uh, if it's flexible. So I glued it. I glued a block of wood in between with industrial strength glue on straight onto the tube and now it's rock solid <laughs> so if i want to take it off i'll have to get a jigsaw and and sandpaper but that's okay because i think it's gonna live there <laughs> do, do you have any pictures of what you just did um i can show you um uh, or i can show the the crowd if when the when everybody's right. here yeah. it's, it's right outside right now because i'm i want to do some imaging yeah, more people are coming in here. Yeah. Tim Crawford, Bruce. Okay. Participants. Hello, participants. Hey, Hello, Tim. Hi, Tim. Can you hear me better now? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds solid. Little, Testing. Uh, the little thing that I can push on the cord, I thought was the mute switch. No, it's volume up, volume down. Huh. But somehow you're you're just dropping out every other word. Not, am I doing it now? No, so far so okay. good. I've ordered a headset that's got a microphone that comes around right in front of my face. Right. I've got. There's a little bounce. I have a little telephone thing that I. Yeah, I have the same sort of thing exactly. For, for telephone, I have fifteen dollars. Yeah, something cheap. See, I can just pull that right out of space here. Just reach back in the galaxies. <laughs> Except your glasses go around the side of your head. Yeah, that's kind of cool, huh? <laughs> They're adaptable. They go in your ear. You can see out of your ear too. Uh, Bob Richard is coming in. So, Tom, did you get some of my images that I sent? No, I didn't see those yet. No. Uh oh. Who'd you, okay. Who'd you send? Who'd you send those to? To you and Tom Whittemore at the same time. Huh, I must. Did you send it to the webmaster? I sent those. Uh oh. I might have sent those by text. Sorry. Would you like me to send emails now? Sure. Go ahead. Okay, I'll try and find them again. Okay. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. 
<laughs> there he is. There he is. Oh, are you seeing yeah, good new glasses? glasses? <laughs> <laughs> you got new glasses. Tim, that's scary. That's Crawford Garcia. <laughs> yeah. Uh, didn't I see you one? back? Didn't I see you back in 1803 at the Santa Barbara? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if I can find the ones I want here. Um, ah, which ones? I think this, and there's one other one that I'm gonna do. Oh, this your brother? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on. Okay, so I'll send you these by email and to your Gmail, okay? Okay. These are images from today and uh, I don't know if they're all loaded. Let's see, one, two, Three, uh, that one is not so good. Oh, well, we'll do it. Well, I'm sending them anyway. Sure. It's just the idea that's going to count. Uh, let's see. Where am I? Back on, on Sergeant Garcia. Yeah, there you go. That was a little, that was a swap out that I had. That It's got some little app that you could swap out a picture and put your face in it. And I did it to a guy at work and he got all really mad about it. And so I said, oh, come on, lighten up. I'll do it to myself. <laughs> you didn't like your face? <laughs> I, I, love, I love that old Zorro movie. So I, I saw that and I said, I got to have that. Um, all the right, images just... I sent were, the, I think the order may or may not be, um, there but you'll you'll see there's going to be four images that are taken today and i was doing some figuring on my eight inch mirror two was the first two of those one inside one outside and then uh the other two were also after a second like two or three minute uh corrective session that uh, tom Woodmore told me to do and um uh, once we can get those up, we can start whenever you want. I know that other people want to do stuff tonight, but if you have if you have a moment, I'll talk a little bit about it. All right, I'm trying to load them up right now. I I prefer if you send the images as attachments. Sorry, or even I, that's or even even better than attachments is uh, when you have your own uh, photo website and you can just do a a link to, to your own photo website, that's even better. So like, you know, flickr.com, you can have free, upload free photos there, make your own little albums, photo albums, kind of neat. I'll, I'll look into it. I, one of the things that I can tell you is that in, I'm using an iPad and so I can take pictures of a lot of this stuff with an iPhone and it just uh, goes to the photos. And so correct. loading these, I don't know if I can use like a normal computer with the tabs. I'd have to send them to another computer and then send them as attachments. I could do that. It'd take forever, but I might be able to do that. It won't take twice as forever. <laughs> well, at twice. least it won't be a hassle for you, Tom. That that's that's what I want to avoid. Yeah, uh, you know, sometimes you they prefer... have iCloud. You can share directly from iCloud too. Photos. Don't know how that would work. Not, or you can download. You can. I don't know if you get a, a, attached from iCloud to an email. Well, I don't want to attach, but have a link from iCloud, make an album in iCloud and share that one area of photos. Okay, this is all stuff that's pretty new to me. So yeah. I'm not real good, as you know, with, with all this stuff. It'll be easy to figure out once I get going into it. So, so Would Jerry you prefer uh, PN, PNG, JPEGs, what? What type of file would you prefer? JPEG, uh, PNGs, PDF? Probably JPEG. Uh, JPEGs, yeah, generally. Okay, okay. All right, I'll try. I'll try to do. Uh, so I just want to mention that Jerry says he was babysitting down in Camarillo today, so he might not make it back in time for to join us in the meeting here. So uh, 
where should we start? So Timmy loads some photos I can show, but uh, Bob, uh, any progress on your observatory there? What, what's the latest word on your observatory? Oh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're making some real progress. And um, so uh, we got the refund from Nextome. They did refund the card. So we got our money back. Um, so this, uh, this week we are ordering the pro dome and that's the 10 foot diameter observatory. And um, if they are able to keep their current um, delivery commitment, it should be here around the first part of August, just in time for us to get heated up. I was <laughs> trying to set it up, just hope nobody gets any heat stroke. Um, but um, anyway, and then we've got a, fundraising campaign going here. So if any of you feel like you'd like the desire to help a good cause, let me know because uh, we're looking to uh, raise about $9,100 uh, by uh, solstice. We call it the, the race to the solstice. <laughs> so by the 20th, um, we want to cover that $9,100. So if any of you are Woo! feeling like, whoa, this is something that's really worthwhile. It's good to me. Let me know, and uh, I can tell you how to do it. Uh, so it's tax deductible. Well, it's all tax deductible. Correct. It is seriously. It's it's a donation to uh, Westminster Village is a not for not for profit organization. So when you when you give it, you write it to Westminster Village Inc. And uh, it's all tax deductible. Yes. Yep. So. You want to give to a charity a good cause? Here's your chance. <laughs> um, even if you send 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 fifteen or twenty bucks, uh, every every little bit helps. So anyway, we're trying to to cover that, and um, I, I'm quite sure we will. I'm quite sure we'll be able to to pull it off. Um, you know, because uh, the interest level here is very high, and there are people here who uh, are very interested in this. So. Um, so that's where we are. Um, yeah, we're moving, we're moving along. Did you so, get new glasses? What? Did you get new glasses? Oh, these are my computer glasses. Yeah, oh, I've okay. always worn those, Bruce. Yeah, I mean, I, I, otherwise my other glasses are just, I can't see it, you know, close. I, I do have, I am operating now from a new computer that I recently got in my, it's still in my study, but it, it's a, it's a gaming computer. I'm, I use it with flight simulator, oh, which okay. I don't know if any of you guys are interested in flight simulator. It's with the new 2020 Microsoft flight simulator is just unbelievable in terms of the detail. Uh, it's unbelievable, the technology. So you're a qualified pilot now then? Uh, I tell you, you can do it. <laughs> But anyway, I got this. Uh, it's a very high-speed uh, computer, which you need. You have to have. But I'm using it here to hopes that um, I won't drop out as much. Uh, yeah, so, sometimes it's the Wi-Fi connection is what you have to worry about. You know how your strong your signal is to your local uh, router. I think. That's right. That's correct. Uh, but my study here with my other computer is notoriously bad, and I had to. Uh, take my computer out into the dining room area always. So I'm doing this in here with this computer. I'm in the study. Um, and uh, so actually, uh, I can, uh, let me here. Um, so Bob, you know, I, I've installed a couple of, of Wi-Fi extenders. I think TP-Link is the company. And that's helped my signal like in the garage and in this other room over here. So there's, there's, I think like 50 bucks maybe, and they, they help boost the signal, probably lose yeah. a lot of security or something. I don't know, but it, it, it seems, seems to work. Yeah, I, I had a booster in our other place before we came here. This is the, this is the study looking from the, at the entrance back mm -hmm. and the telescope that six inch scopes over here in my right. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, but uh, I've tried that and it does work. Um, so I would have to get a, it has to be compatible with what they have here in terms of their, you know, uh, uh, 
Oh, you don't have your own router. You're actually just using Westminster. Yeah, yeah okay. see, they, they, I'm using uh, Westminster's router. They have several different routers. Okay. But I could do that. I mean, I'm, I can still work with this, and I maybe I'll get their IT people up here, and, and we could do that. Yeah. Have you have you ever done like you go to speedtest.net and that can oh, show yeah. you how how fast you can up download and upload? Yeah, yeah I do. And and uh, speeds are good. Speeds okay. are good. The yeah. other thing to look at is that if it's a dual band router, a lot of these routers have the same SSID for the five gig band as the 2.4 gig. Yeah. So let's say you connect up and you can't get five, five gig doesn't have nearly the range that 2.4 gig has. Uh, I can get 2.4 gig back to my back fence, which is about 300 feet away from me right here. And I've got it mounted outside. But uh, uh, I had a router that was a dual band router and the SSIDs were exactly the same. So when somebody would try to connect, what was going on was they both, they have two separate passwords. And so they wouldn't be able to connect at 5G. And so therefore they just give up. So it's better to have a separate SSID for each of those bands so that you can, then you'll know you're getting either the 2.4 gig band or uh, the five gig. So yeah. that, that's one thing you can check into. That's real simple with Wi-Fi. Yeah, um, one of one of our routers is 5G, and it's identified as 5G. The other is 4. Uh, excuse me, man. I gotta I gotta turn on our phone line here. Hold on. Okay. <coughs> so Tim, uh, want want to go to your photos and? Sure, sure. I was hoping so, uh, Jerry Tom, would be here. Oh, it's okay. on, uh, if if you want me to sh show you my setup outside, then it's getting dark. I mean, uh, <laughs> you want to? Can you do that right now? I can do it right now. So just to tell the rest what Tom and I were talking about, I got this um, autofocuser working. Uh, it, it, I had trouble at first because it had a bracket that did not fit on my uh, telescope. And uh, I attached it with a piece of sheet metal with drills hold in it, uh, holes drilled in it. And uh, it, it didn't work at all. So, <clears throat> so two nights ago, I, I got some glue and uh, a block of wood that I put in between the focuser and, and the tube and I just glued it tight and now it's tighter than ever and I get really beautiful focus so that's one thing I can show and, and also the Medusa is there that I showed off a while ago so let me just go outside and quickly show you what the stat of it, what it looks like I mean it's nothing special but at least it's still light so uh, hopefully it uh, stays clear tonight anyway um, we keep saying that here also yeah, so that's the setup. Uh, I'm trying to get what the size is that? Sorry, what does that scope? What size? Yeah, 12 inch. Oh, so, cool. so here's the, the electronics. Um, whoops, let me see. Yeah, so can you see it? I oh. think you can. So I that's all. Speaker, nice go together. to speaker view so you can see it up close. If you change to speaker view from gallery view, you'll get a bigger picture on your screen. Oh, uh huh. Speaker view. How do I do this here? Speaker view to gallery view. To explain to me how that works. Well, there's like li they little uh, squares in the upper right hand corner uh, that, shows, that shows either speaker view or gallery view. Ah, so view. So, like this? It's view shows a view. Is it better? So whoever whoever's doing the talking will show up in, in the big view. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. There you go. Automatic. All right. So so that's the electronics. It works pretty well. And uh, as you can tell, this the focuser here, and you see that uh, wooden block. Oops. Uh, <laughs> Seeing the camera. That's that's the focuser. That you, uh, so so this this guy here, this, this wooden block. That's what I attached here. So the focuser is now locked tight to the tube, and that, that makes a big difference. But altogether, it works pretty well. Anyway. Where did you put the glue at? Sorry? Did you glue the, the block to the tube? Yes. OK. It was uh, not very elegant, but it's, uh, it's practical. And I was uh, fed up with the whole thing, so. An epoxy, or what type of glue? E6000. Um, oh, OK. I know that one. Yeah, well, I tried it before, and it, it does. It looks pretty innocent, but uh, it 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 sits tight. <laughs> so yeah, this focuser does it 
focus automatically itself or do you still have to go through and focus it yourself? Uh, so I have e so uh, what I do is I start autofocus in ECOS and it will um, try all kinds of settings. And then after a while, you'll see that V shape. And I suppose it's maybe it will stop after some, uh, but at some point I just stop it myself and just uh, manually enter the, the best setting that it found. And uh, with this uh, glued block, I got razor sharp focus last night. So, um, and of course, then the clouds rolled in. But other than that, that was a success. So finally, something is working. <laughs> so, That's I'll great. Working. And so, by the way, uh, Dick, I also got an Astro Cat 51. I couldn't stand it. So, <laughs> oh, okay. Huh. <laughs> it's a nice little piece of gear. But uh, see, because I'm going to the Grand Canyon on June 6th, I thought, you know, if I'm going to get it, I might as well get it now. Why not? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this good. Good for you. Canyon. Uh, I'm very impressed with all the pictures that you show. I mean, Thank the you. resolution that you get is like, geez, is, 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 can I get that with my 12 inch? It's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah. amazing. So it is amazing. What did, right. what, did, what, did, what, what did you get, Hank? The, the red cat? The Astro cat. Uh, the, yeah, the red, sorry, red cat. Yeah, oh, red cat. cat. That's what red you were cat. talking Sorry. Yeah. Red cat. That is a sweet, sweet. Yeah. You're going to love it. And the yeah, design is cool. beautiful. The yeah. design well, images that he sent is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that's worth the money. I mean, uh, it's a nice wide field. I've always wanted to do that. And I have an 80 millimeter, but it's just not wide enough. I mean, 80 millimeter is good for Andromeda and so on. But if you want the Milky Way, you need something wider. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. So, Hank, are, Hank, Hank, are you taking your 12 inch of the Grand Canyon also? Yes. I'm going to take the spider out and going to stuff the inside. So I'm going to put, make a round disc that I shove all the way up to the mirror to protect the mirror and then stuff it from the inside because I'm going to have a, a friend comes with me. So, and uh, yeah, it's going to be tight uh, be, with all my gear because I want to bring two mounts actually. So the Los Mandy and the AVX. So <laughs> let's see if it works. I'm sure I'll squeeze it in there, but uh, yeah. Wow. June should be a good time of the year up there. It should be good. Uh, yeah, I think so too. Yeah, it'll be not, fun. So not the, not the best time to have a compact car, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it'll be fine. Right, so I I could switch to Tim's uh, photos of his mirror. <clears throat> See if we can share that. I'm uh, afraid Tim. some of these are not really in focus. I had a little bit of. Uh, trouble with these so bear with me okay um see i wish i knew which ones were which uh this, this is 849 let's see go, go through all four okay this is the second that's the first time around and then i think if there's if there's if there's one right after this that's uh that's inside r that one and then do one more that's the second phase. Sorry about the focus. And uh, then there's one more in, out uh, inside R. Yeah, I think that that's the second time. So the first two that you showed were the first time I that I, I was working today. Now I called Tom on these um, a little bit of just just for your guys' information. If you're not familiar <laughs> with it, what we're dealing with here. Is a ronky grating. I'm 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 throwing an LED down, bouncing it off my mirror through a uh, through a hundred line grating. Tom loaned a really nice glass grating uh, made by Edmund Scientific, and it just beat the pants off of everything else I had. I was using transparencies, and Perry at, at uh, Will uh, Woman Bell before they dissolved sent me what was supposed to be a hundred line grating, and it was not. It, it, it was like more like 65. And um, so I took Tom's, uh, he, he loaned me his tester, he loaned me all the, the, the gear that goes with it. But his grading was just so, it, it sent so much more detail, so much more information that I really got a lot out of it. And uh, uh, basically for everybody here, the center of the mirror, let's count that as zero and the outer edge, that's 100. So as you go from zero, the zero zone out to the 100 zone, halfway out from the center to the edge is the 70 zone. 
that's 70 percent of the light is getting is you're collecting in that inner 70 percent so uh that's that's how we're going to communicate on this and uh basically what tom when i sent them to him i said i really would really much appreciate you taking a look at these i i had a bit of what i thought was an edge uh that was turned I couldn't get this little, uh, when you use a knife edge, let me go back up a bit here. When you use a knife edge, when you, when you throw the beam of the LED beam down and bring it back and you're right at R, you're right at what would be, you know, twice the focal length, it's going to show you something like that. It's going to show you an image that has, uh, where you can, you can really see clearly, uh, the highs, the lows. Right here, you have if you if you had a pin stick on this, that little shadow where the donut is going around, probably near the seventy zone, and so it's there in the seventy zone. You get a lot of detail there, but um, in particular, what happens when you're at R? Everything grays out, and if you if you adjust it, Joe Doyle is really good at this. When you're right at R, right at kind of at focus, uh, the entire disc grays out. And you get this rim of light that goes all the way around the disc. And that, that halos, that angel's halo will tell you, you don't have a turned edge. So to me, I didn't get that. Um, so um, of, of these, boy, I sent you a lot of stuff. <laughs> That's the cave mirror. Uh, by the I way, trying, I was trying to find. Uh, just looking at. I was trying to find a picture of a knife edge at at uh, at radius. Oh, okay. Yeah. There, there was. I think one, but it didn't. It didn't show much. It didn't show show very much. It showed the right edge. Usually, what happens is you get the rim of light. If you're if you're introducing the knife edge from the left side of your tester, you'll get a rim of light to the right. And if it doesn't go all the way around, it means you still have a turned edge. Well. In talking to Tom today, he was saying, I don't see any evidence of a turned edge. He goes, you know, you're just not tuning that. You're not fine tuning your knife edge. You're not. It, it, he just doesn't think it's turned. In, in this view here, which is inside R, your inside focus, you're going to you're going to see this kind of watermelon look. So the lines are they're they're, they're bowed out. And that's the kind of look that you're going to you're going to see. Usually what you end up analyzing here inside R is more of the center of the mirror. You really get an idea of what's going on in there, not so much on the outside. The outside, it's going to the lines are going to bow the other direction, and that's when you're really kind of testing the edge more. Um, uh, there was an image that Tom brought up that showed him if you can go back and get those ronky um, side by side comparisons. It was a black and white uh, photo. If you can go back and find that, uh, it'll show you what that what the ronky for. This particular mirror, that there is what this mirror is supposed to look like. And so the, the left image there, that's out, that's inside R. And the one to the far right, that's going to be the, the, the one um, that, that's outside R. What we tune are, are you can tune your wonky, your, the distance from the mirror to your wonky grading. You can tune it to get as many lines as you want or as few. Like, say, for instance, in the center image here, you, if you're getting very near R. And the lines, as you get towards R, like I said, it grays out. The lines get fewer. And they get, re they get really, really fat. And then all of a sudden, it's just grayed out. So what we, to what we like to do in the, in the workshop is get five lines, one, two, three, four, five, on either side here. I'm a little bit more than that, but that's okay. Because what I wanted you to see is that this is an eight inch mirror and I hit, you can see above the radius curvature, 81 inches. Um, so half that is the focal length. And we have a, the measurement, we have the grading hundred, you know, hundred lines per inch. I had to kind of play with this. I think this is Mel, I think this is, uh, what's his name? Mel, uh, uh, Mel Bartel? Mel, Bart Mel Bartel. I think that, this is his his uh, engine. You can kind of like play with it, and you can get these lines. I had a hell of a time with this. Which the line that said grading offsets from radius of curvature, and then you you kind of enter in there, or you use the uh, slider to the right there, and it 
it'll give you it'll give you what these things are going to look like but it's, it's really hard to, to you have to kind of hit and miss and uh to get to get it tuned out anyway this is what it's supposed to look like now going back to those images that we that i sent to for tonight you can see that uh that the images i have now um there you can see that image that's pretty close to where where we were uh now this one here this is this this is the second time uh the second session today it's out of focus but it's gonna give you enough information here i can actually talk about it a bit uh the inner from about the 70 zone in you know and uh, let's call it 60 zone in 65 zone in this these lines start to straighten out you see how they're kind of straight now, that means that the mirror is spherical in that in in that section. So it's a little it's it's not deep enough in the center. So I'm using uh, the tool I'm using the pitch lap I'm using is is a four and a half inch lap. It's a sub diameter lap, and so in you're always working with that lap on the top of the mirror, and you're doing these little W strokes. So what Tom wanted me to do was try to correct that intersection to give it a little bit more depth. What that will do is it'll curve those lines a little bit more and the central line running right down the middle, it's gonna be a little fatter in the inside. So in, in doing this, if we can go to another image, do the first one that's, out, uh, that's outside our uh, Tom, and I'll tell you what Tom was telling me about it. Yeah, uh, no, there's one, that one. So for some odd reason, when I'm taking pictures with this iPhone, the lights at the outer edges, uh, th those black bands at the outer edges, getting those lights, the, 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 the light areas to, to be on both sides, it was just hell, you know, and I, I got really lucky here. I got a pretty good image here. Tom says it's not fine tuned enough. It's not, it needs it to go, it needed to go a little bit, the central line needed to go a little bit further to the right to give us the information we really needed. What he was suggesting uh, is that, not in this image, I'll show you in another image. Even though this looks like I've got these nice bands to the outside and the inner bands are, are turned in about 65 zone in to the center, it's a little bit spherical in there. So that's why I said he wanted me to deepen that. But now go to the outside image. I think it's the next image. And you, what, what I wanted to, to show you is that this is where it got it got really uh, confusing to me. Is um, yeah, if you go to that one, let's just start there. If that image there shows that the bands are, um, you can see how they're it's fat in the middle in that central region, and then the, the the second bands are are fairly nice. Now, what he was telling me is that you go from about the sixty five zone out to the hundred zone. This is now it, this is inside R. And he was trying to tell me that the lines from the 65 zone to the outside, they're more spherical. They're, they're um, undercorrected there. So they're flatter. It's flatter out there. And so I was going, well, wait a minute. How can it be flat in the middle in one picture and, then, and not flat in the, in, the, in the other one? When you reverse it, it shows that the inside is, is, is figured enough. And then from about the 60 zone out to the 100 zone, it's flat out there. And then he explained to me, no, it can happen. And he goes, what, what's happening here uh, uh, is that I went through this first initial phase and he says, Tim, the center of this, um, of the central line, it's not fat enough. It's just too slender. So the middle of this mirror from about 40 zone, 50 zone in is just too flat. It's too spherical. So it did need to have more correction. At the same time, at the outer bands, it needed more correction out there. So not very much, not very much. So he wanted me to stay completely away from that in the second session I did and just run a small little W thing. Just imagine a four and a half inch uh, lap over the top of that mirror. And I'm gonna take it right and left, up and down, very, very shallow, inch, maybe an inch, traveling an inch up and to the right, the left, just an inch and using the, the figure of, of, a, of a W. So it's gonna be a small W going to a just slightly larger W 
over to the right and get smaller again. And as you're doing that, you're walking around your work surface and, and uh, doing that same type of correction. You're, you're walking around the barrel a couple of times. So in this, it, I did that in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the second session. If you go to the next image, you're going to see outside R. It's the, you're going to find that the out, that image there, you can see on the left side that I didn't get that light to show on the left edge. And even though I did exactly what he said, it does look flat in the middle still, but it's, it's, it's elusive because these, the bands that are just adjacent to that central line, they are slightly more curved hmm. than, the, than the original one. So it did the job but I only worked two minutes. So it was a very, mm. very small amount of time. Mm. So it's too bad Jerry's not here. He wanted his take on this. He also suggested to me that in these images, there's no abrupt turn away at the bottom or the top of these lines. There's no real turnout. That would indicate, like I said, when you're outside R, we're out, when you're outside R, the lines, if you have a turned edge, they're going to abruptly turn. To, to, on the right side, they're going to abruptly turn to the right. They're going to hook on the left side. They're going to hook out at the edges. And he was suggesting to me that he did not see that. He said, I think your edge is just fine. I thought I saw just a slow amount there. Mm -hmm. And now Mike Chibnick was telling me, don't worry about it. Keep figuring it. Keep doing what you're doing. And as you figure, as you start doing this more, that outside edge, it's going to just get better and better. Okay. So that's where I'm at. I'm using a four and a half inch uh, tool. And uh, Tom said, I, I said, well, what, what do I do here? Any suggestions? And he said, Tim, I think what I'd like you to do is get, is pour you a full lap. So on a, a tool that that's an eight inch tool with a pitch lap on it. And I said, Tom, you already poured me one. I don't have, I didn't send you an image of that, but I've got it. I've got a, a beautiful eight inch lap. So I'm gonna, the last time I played with this full lap, I just screwed the mirror up completely. I was worked for months to get it back where it was. And I'm going to suggest that what did that is that I didn't press it out enough. You have to get that pitch lap really hot. You know, almost get the water so you can't touch it. And then soak it in that and put some cerium oxide on your, on your mirror. Put the pitch lap over the top of that. And put weight on top of that. And let that sucker press out for an hour. Let it press out for two hours so that you get a marriage of those two surfaces that are absolutely exact. And then you can go ahead and do the, the work that he wanted me to do. So what Tom was saying that he thinks that, that I'm really close to kissing this mirror off to being done. And what he would like me to do is to, to go ahead and put the, the clap on top. So tool on top, T-O-T. -T. You put tool on top and run, run it so it's center over center. The center of the tool is right over the center of the mirror. Maybe a little tiny bit right, a little tiny bit left, and no more than about an inch of travel in any one direction. And what that does with the tool on top is it kind of works on the outs, outer uh, zones of the mirror. He suggested to me that the outside, yes, it was flatter out there, but the zone adjacent to that, remember, said the 70 zone was exactly halfway from the center to the outside he said that's the zone that's too it's it's too corrected it's too it's too low so he's thinking what i want to do is go ahead and go ahead and use this uh, spherizing stroke center over center up and back for you know four or five minutes and then do another ronky grade look at it again and he thinks what that's going to do is it's going to take this outer zones it's going to lower it so it's that 70s zone and then capture the middle so it's going to blend the entire surface together then we'll flip it so that the mirror is on top and then you're going to go ahead and run your parabolizing strokes hopefully that's going to end up changing this mirror to exactly where you want to go so that everything kind of moves together at the same time ending up with a perfect parabola which you saw in that that black and white uh, image that's that's what it's going to look like inside and out so having trouble with the, the pin sticks using the, the knife edge having trouble reading these donuts that i had a good picture you showed tom where we had that donut 
running around uh, the, the, the mirror. It's, it's hard to get those and get all those reads that you're going to use a, a micrometer and then run it through your, your um, I have a software I use, but the Mike Chibnick, Tom, Tom, uh, uh, Tom Whittemore and Jerry, they all, they all do that with the, the map. As a matter of fact, Bruce wrote me a program, which I could probably use to do that. And uh, so anyway, that's, that's where I'm at. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try that next week and see, see, go very, very slow. Cause hopefully what I don't want to do is turn an edge again and have months of work again. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it was, it was horrible because using that full size lap, you can do it really fast. Uh, mm -hmm. When you have the tool yeah. on top and you use that center over center, you can turn an edge and you're right back where you don't want to be. So that's about it. Mm -hmm. and just showing you what a pain in the ass this thing can be. Uh, once you get this close enough, I've already got my scope made. You saw the pictures that Tom showed you that, of that scope that I, I already have made. I'm going to pop that mirror in that scope and take it outside and star test it. And that's going to tell me one whole lot more about where the quality is. So that's it, folks. That's where I'm at. A little bit of, it's not so much astrophotography tonight. This is the stuff we were doing in the workshop, which I love. And it's, I, it's, uh, I think you need to show that guitar. <laughs> did I send you that? Did I send you an image of that, Tom? I don't think I have it handy. I don't see it. Uh, it's, there is, uh, uh, I've been I've been spending the reason I haven't been doing a lot on this mirror is because I've been building a classical guitar. Uh, I don't really know how to share content on this. I could try it, but if I get in trouble, I'm screwed. Um, should I try it? You could just hold it up to the camera. Yeah. Oh, I I well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do. Let me let me get the. Uh, I'll, I'm going to go to the full. I don't know if I can do this. How about if I switch the camera? Yeah. Yeah, that you can do that. You okay. Just got to be careful touching it. You got to just touch it once. Don't touch it twice. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, th I think is, that you've, you've got that moon background is really messy. You got to get rid of the background. Yeah. You have to turn off your ski screen background, turn that off. Oh God, I'm going to get all screwed up here. <laughs> yes. Background. None. Okay. There you go. Here's the guitar. Wow. Okay. So that right there, it'll show you, uh, there's the neck of the guitar doing the, 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 head, the head of that. And then as you as you come, you can see the the, the Spanish peel, and then the Indian rose and in the inside you can see that there's liner linings and there's there's a you can see the fan braces on the inside side braces and then the, the cool. top uh, down at the end from there that's the, that's going to be what they call the heel block or the end block and that stiffens it at the at the end. And then at this end, the uh, the end of the neck, what they call uh, uh, over over here, the Spanish heel. That's all carved by hand. And then what I'm up to right now is these mahogany strips at the top. They're called curved liners. Uh, there's a there's another top right here, and you can see I have the transverse bars all ready to glue in. And then that's going to go onto the top of the guitar to close to close the box something that's really cool see that this this you can barely see it but there's a block that's running uh, laterally across over the sound hole and it's held on by a wing nut and one of the guys in this forum i'm on he said be sure to put that wing nut on the outside because if you close the box and glue the whole thing together you'll be able to get it out <laughs> i never thought of that that would be really horrible so this thing that it's sitting on with all with all the slot yeah that would be a real surprise so this thing that it's sitting on this, all this, uh, this, this uh, plywood here, in the Spanish method, it's called a solera, and the solera is a workboard. And you play the the, the bottom of the, the 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 guitar top. You can see it's laying the surface of the guitar top is laying on it, got a shape to it. So I had to dome this 
this uh, in the center to the tune of about, oh, two millimeters deep, two and a half millimeters. This neck here, it tilts down about two millimeters. It plane that down about two millimeters. So the neck has a downward tilt. And then the very mm -hmm. last thing you do is after you, after you screw this up enough, oh, by the way, all these the gizmos here, the spool clamps, the Solara, it, and all the, the pieces of the wood here did it all. I made all that. It's, it's there is the, the gizmo here. It's a template. I made that out of uh, plexiglass and inscribed it. And it's been a real, uh, it's been a real challenge, real challenge. Now, what do I do here? <laughs> Very amazing, Tim. Totally yeah, so, amazing. Beautiful. Yeah, and it's, yeah. so I thought I'd share that. That's the reason I haven't yeah. been doing a whole lot of the, the mirror. It's taken forever. Hey, Tim, is, but, does it you know, have an adjustable neck or is it just, um, I mean, how do you? It's not. You, know, you have to be very careful then, not. right? Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, um, I had a I had a guitar that was made by a Japanese guy. Uh, he's, he learned from one of the, the best Japanese luthiers. And um, I, I got one of his guitars and the guy said, you got to tune it down every night or else an echo warp. And I was going, what? That's like, you know, and the guitar is expensive. So I ended up really not liking it. I got a guitar from a guy named Andy Culpepper in New York. And this young kid, he made, I, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I love his stuff. And I told him, I told this to him about this, this Japanese guy. And he had to tune it down every night. And he goes, well, you're not going to get that with my guitar. And he, he puts, he puts a carbon fiber rod in and, and, inserts it into the neck so i did that i sent you a, i sent you one image you had some of the images tom that i had on my website there on my photos but the router got loose <laughs> and i it just ran off to the side with a little tiny squirrely line went in off to the side and i went uh oh <laughs> you know i'm done with the neck i'm done with everything and i got this little squirrely line so what i what did i do i went ahead and routed that thing straight and then I inserted the neck, um, the, uh, the the carbon fiber rod with epoxy. And then I went ahead and, and cut myself a piece of, um, it was uh, uh, Spanish cedar. And I inserted it into that line, that, that extra line that I cut off to the side and glued that in. And then uh, planed it all back down and, and, uh, and, and modified it. That's going to be covered with a fingerboard so you'll never see it. But the, that little carbon fiber rod, it's only an eighth inch, it's only eighth, eighth inch wide by three inch, inch deep. That'll keep, it's not going anywhere. That, that guitar neck won't go anywhere. So an adjustable neck, the truss rods, that's what you were talking about, Pink, those yeah. truss rods you're seeing a lot of steel guitar, the string guitars, yeah. they're, they're nice. They're really nice. Like the, the Martin guitars I have in, of yesteryear, I have one I had in fourth grade, uh, old mahogany uh, guitar. And that thing still, the neck is is still there. It hasn't moved an iota. The pit, right. the, the intonation on that guitar is fabulous. Yeah. The later I have, guitars I have now Yamaha, that Martin's I have the Yamaha and the Martin guitar, and uh, they, they, I've never had to adjust, adjust the neck there. You can though, you can. But yeah, the yeah, trouble I, with them, if yeah. if you get if you get a little bit over ambitious with the with the truss truss rod, it's just a, it's it's just an Allen wrench, and you stick it in the little slot inside the guitar with the martins mm -hmm. and i think the yamahas are on the outside up by the where the tune the tuning keys are you just mm -hmm. take a little plate off there and you put the little uh, gizmo in there and turn it right or left and it right, it right. bows the neck upward or downward but you can get a little bit over, over ambitious and then you break the rod so right. now what do you do <laughs> you know like so, you got so a how, broken yeah. rod in the how inside did, of your how did you get that piece of fiberglass uh, that piece of carbon fiber in that in that neck i mean how do you drill a hole that's long enough you you you, you use a router with about you use a router with an eighth in, eighth inch bit and for sure you use a plunge router so you set up your guides on either side and you take one pass at it and you know your neck is is going to be about you know so it's it's about it's about it's about so thick Oh, okay. What am I doing here? Yeah, but but it's it, so thick. I still don't get it. It, so, it, it, it. Is it neck in two parts that you that you make a, a hole in with the router, then carbon fiber pole in there, and then 
put the top um, on. <laughs> here, look. Let me let me see if I can show you this. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna uh, try and do this. It's 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 a uh, um, because that's or is it underneath? It might be underneath. Damn, it's underneath. So I can't take uh, just just for the sake of looking at it. Here's the uh, here's the neck. This is the backside. Right. Okay. I'm imagine me on the other side of this underneath. Imagine, imagine that I have that set up. It hasn't been attached to the guitar yet. So mm -hmm. it's just a piece of Spanish cedar that's laying on your workbench. Okay. And uh, what, you, what, what you do is you, you put boards next to it. You put a mm -hmm. router bit in your router. You set the depth, the final depth that you want to your deepest, uh, to your deep, deepest stop. The way that these plunge routers work is you have a little wheel and you kind of turn the wheel two you know one or two or three times probably three times one two three and every time you turn that there's a stop that goes down and hits these little um these little stops at the bottom so every time you turn the little wheel at the bottom it's a little bit deeper and then a little bit deeper the beauty of the plunge router is that every time you lower it you don't end up with um you don't end up with little lines that if you were to use a screw down type router, it has these little rims every, for every depth that you set. The plunge router has an absolutely smooth hole all the way down. Mm -hmm. So this gets a little bit crazy here, but what you wanna do is there's a, there's a spot in the neck of the guitar. If you get too close to the center line of the neck, it's a spot where I think, what did he call it? There's a, I can't remember the name for it, but you don't want to put your bar there. You don't want to put your carbon fiber rod there. You want to have it a little bit lower. So you're almost going down to the bottom of that. Uh, you're going to get, you're going to get probably about uh, three sixteenths inch from the bottom of that neck, maybe mm -hmm. more, quarter of an inch. And that takes it out of that central zone. If you put your carbon fiber rod there, it's not going to do any good because there's no real movement in that center. Okay. Uh, you guys in physics will have the idea what it is better than I do, but you're, tr you're supposed to keep it out of that zone. So anyway, Hank, you okay. you you run you run the slot length right down your 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 neck, and then you run it a little deeper, and then a little deeper, and you just drop that little carbon fiber rod in there with uh, with epoxy, and it sets it. And over the top of that, you cut another piece of wood that fits right over the top of that. Oh, so then you, okay, you, okay. And you uh, epoxy that yeah. over the top. Right, right. That, so, that was my. That was the problem. So now it's encapsulated okay, so, it inside the net. Sure. Okay. And then you yeah, yeah. and you plane that down and finish it down, and then later the fingerboard goes over the top of that. Uh, so it's been a real education for me. I'm telling you, I've learned so much, so much on this. It's just incredible. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, pictures online, and they even have two rods uh, going side by side. I think they so. do, and a lot yeah. of Spanish, a lot of Spanish, the Japanese guy that I that I I use, they use they use uh, ebony, they use uh, ebony uh, wood because mm -hmm. it's really stiff and it's really it's it, it's very stiff, it's very dense, and so they just route out these these double. Uh, passes with again with a router and they insert this ebony and then at the end they shape their neck okay with, so tim, with, tim i got a question for you so yeah. what kind of music what kind of music do you play with your guitar i used to play uh just folk music i'm not very good at all and so i used to just play like dylan and peter paul and mary stuff when i was young i wanted to i wanted to eventually get better and learn more about music theory a little bit, know a little bit, have a little bit more knowledge of the guitar other than the first position, which means down at the first fret, you know, the first three frets. Most people just play chords down there. And that, I'm one of them. I just play chords down there. So lately I was studying uh, classical and classical is a whole nother animal. It's really, really fun. And you, you're getting, it, does, it doesn't mean I'm going to be doing things like Bach. It means that I, I'm going to find things that I like and try to learn them. Uh, I, I, played a, I, I played this song called uh, uh, Preludio de Adios. And it's uh, Al, Alfonso Montez was a man in, in Venezuela who had to, um, he, he had to leave 
Venezuela because of the political climate. And he was forced to leave his home. And when he wrote this song, it was for leaving. I think it means the preludio de adios is the prelude to leaving. And when he when he played it, I I didn't have the sheet music for it. And I, I contacted this guy named, named Tabi Gennari on a, a, a website called Elite Guitarist. And he said, the guy hasn't given the, he haven't given us the right for the, for the, uh, the, the sheet music. And I said, can I write a letter and you send it to him? And I did that. And I told him, look, that man's own inhumanity to man is, is something that goes on unchecked throughout time. And I said, nobody likes leaving their home, but home is where you are. And you're welcome as the flowers in May, as far as I'm concerned, wherever you go. And I said, your music, it stands, it, it absolutely stands alone in a sea of music. It's an absolutely incredible uh, uh, song if you ever get a chance to, to, to hear it. So, so it's, it's, it's neat. And then, and then there's, there's a lot of different ones. Um, there's a there's a fellow I can't think of his name down in LA who uh, really good guitarist who formed a, a quartet for for guitars in, in UCLA I believe and um, he's he's really he's an amazing guitarist so he just Tim, put on a concert for free and Tim I guess I think we better get back to anything else astrophotography or telescope related. So, okay, no quite problem. The, quite, quite the story. It is very interesting, though. I got to admit. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I could, I, I could, I could go on about that stuff all night long. <laughs> any, any, well, let, let's find out now. So, is there anything anyone wants to present tonight? Uh, anything else? I'll share some of my stuff that I oh, got great. from last time. So let's see hey. here. <laughs> anyway, um, Chuck, you see I went on too far. <laughs> let me. Uh, no problem. I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was really interesting. So that's the 10 inch setup. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it for the astrograph. That's my setup for that guy right there. And what I did this time around was I shot um, uh, the Sunflower Galaxy. Now I haven't gotten anything processed. This is just all um, pre-processed stuff right here. Ooh. So next, next week I'll, I'll have some of that, but I got some pretty good detail out of that guy right there. So it came out pretty good. I'm pretty happy about that. But that's that's uh, uncropped image right there of that guy right there. And that came out more or less. Now, I was talking last week about how was I going to make this 24 millimeter shot? I got I tried shooting in, uh, with a long axis east to west and I got so much of a gradient. And the other thing, too, is I couldn't stack in side, side picks in sight. So I came up with a much better what I think is a much better better way of doing it um what i did is you can see that there are two screws going into the camera this screw on the bottom is the one that goes into the normal uh threaded part nut part on the camera for the uh, tripod mount this other screw goes into a hole that's in line with that screw that nut hole on the camera that's about, I would say it's probably about the tap size, drill size for a tap hole for two quarter 20, which is the same size as, uh, as the- Could you uh, use your cursor to show that? Or, or? Yeah, I, I did. Uh, right here, can you see that cursor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that bottom nut, right? The bottom screw right there is the one that screws into this bar at, at, and that doesn't go through, it goes through the bar and screws into the camera. Okay. This nut on top goes through a threaded portion of the bar Ow. and sticks out just enough to form a detent for the camera to hold it in place in that position so it won't swing side to side. Right, That's right. That's a total lock-in. That thing is totally locked from night to night. I've shot three nights, and I wasn't able to get a good stack in uh, Dixon sight again. Even with this arrangement, which I think is rock solid, I mean, it's it, there, that's what you want. If you're going to be using these fisheye lenses, you're going to have to lock this thing down tight. Otherwise, you're going to get distortions. You know. Hey, hey Dick, as the as as screws going in from the side into the side of the camera, do I see that? They're right? going into it, the camera. Here, let's pull it up here again, here, yeah. so we can see what's going on. So the camera right now, that's the bottom of the camera right 
there. Okay. Oh, it's the bottom. And this okay. is the top. Now, this guy that you're seeing here, that's the uh, Pluto uh, shutter, Bluetooth shutter. So wireless okay. shutter. So okay. uh, that's what's on top of the camera. So this would be the top of the camera, and this is the bottom. This is an extended battery pack. What kind of uh, camera is it? Yeah, and that's a 24 millimeter uh, Rinconen uh, f1.4 stop the f4. It's a, yeah. a, a it's a Canon 60 MK2 camera. Okay. So the guide scope 60 millimeters, uh, and uh, it worked out really well. This bar is mounted upside down. It's a Vixen bar with the dovetail mounted downward. I found that to be very nice. One thing, the nuts I had would fit then because the bottom of this bar house counter slinking, uh, the nut, I couldn't get a, a bolt that was uh, either short enough or long enough. You know, I just had, didn't have the right side. So this, this really worked very well. And I'll show you what I got. I got a, a, a raw stack of that. I don't have anything cropped. Excuse me. Do, do you control, I, do, control the camera with software or? Yeah, you... it's a PhD2 guided. You know, it's the same old deal. That's what I've got going on down here. Is, is PhD. But, 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 but the camera itself, do you uh, control the camera? Do just uh, no. take, take images or something? Because it's just it's it's Canon, just, right? It, 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 Canon, if you use APT or. Yeah, or, you can okay. use the, uh, their wireless setup. Yeah. They what got, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't like about it is it seemed like it took too much time. It was taking okay. too much time away from, from what I was trying to do. Yeah, and well, that, you, you can connect it uh, with a through a USB cable. By the way, I don't think you need anything wireless for that. So yeah, oh yeah, that's true. So this is kind of what I got. You can see a couple artifacts. One up here is a tree. This over here is the corner of my shed. So, and of course you've got the gradient. But it really came out. I think the stars came out pretty doggone nice in this. I'm I'm actually very impressed with the setup. That's three nice worth of data, about 43 frames in the stacks. And it came out pretty doggone nice. So what you're centered in on right here is, uh, a, what is it? Uh, Dinobola Leonis. That's the tail star of, of Leo the lion. That's yeah, the star yeah. right here. Oh, yeah. That's, that's it. So you remember what I was talking about, how I process thing for large structure. You can kind of see why in this, because that star, he, the star image there for that star is almost uh, as wide as any of these other stars, which are much dimmer. Uh, so what I try to do is uh, bring out those larger structured stars so you can see what the constellation looks like. That's what, otherwise these star these images that people take of these stars you can't it doesn't even really look like you, what it would look like with your eye. See, uh, whereas what I do, even though it distorts it, uh, it, it 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 does help that a lot. So those hey, are the Dick. two. Hey Dick, I, I thought there was lines connecting the stars so you could see make out the constellation. <laughs> we're not there yet dude yeah i have to wait till yeah i have to wait till it's fully processed for that to happen <laughs> i tell you what some of that is taking me a long time and there's another reason for making the stars bigger because like because sometimes i can't even figure out you know what the constellation stars are but uh it really is very helpful for for me to do these things because then i can get a good idea with a huge swath of the sky what my camera can actually do you know should i go for this object versus that object well it really tells me that so so dick dick do you think you could get the complete uh, leo the lion constellation in that view you could but where I, what i chose what i chose to do if you look at the if you look at the star maps what i was trying to do there was get part of virgo because you got Macarian's chain and you have, uh, let's say, the Leo triplet. There's a, those two guys right there are, are in this particular view. Whereas if you went for just Leo, well, you'd miss Macarian's chain. What I tried to do here was get the greatest swath of galaxies that I could possibly get, going all the way up to Canis Minutisa. So uh, that, that was what my intent was. And I think it worked out rather well this way here, rather than to try to get the entire constellation, which understandably, if you were looking for, you know, a guide to constellations, this would probably not be the way you would want to go about it. But most of Leo is in there. 
just you just most of it is in there. Yeah, absolutely. Most of it, and actually, I would comment that most of the important things in Virgo and Leo are in this view, whereas you know the other sides of it are they're kind of on the outskirts. Right, and you have Coma Bernices too. Coma Bernices. To my eye, that's the most prominent thing in the picture. Absolutely, yeah. That coma, that the coma cluster is is huge. So I'm really looking forward to that. I did take a, a brief perusal on there, and I was able to uh, find the Leo triplet. Uh, so there is detail there. So once I start to process it, I'll show you next week. Maybe I'll give you a processing view of what what I what I did, and and it, it should be pretty good. So I I think the drawback that I have. If I were to criticize this guy, what I don't like about this particular setup is um, that, uh, let's see, you can't angle the camera. So let's say, for example, uh, you know, I showed you that shot of uh, Cygnus and, and Cygnus uh, was centered on Saturn. That camera was angled along the Milky Way. And when you do that, you just get... I mean, there's so much in that shot that you, I mean, it goes all the way from Vega all the way over through, uh, you know, on one side, you've got uh, Cepheus all the way to um, uh, Aquila in the sky and, and a swath of the Milky Way on either side. So almost most of the objects that you would even want to look at are in that one perusal right there. That's kind of what I, I don't have an answer for that. How do you angle the camera if you want to shoot just the you know long axis along the Milky Way? And in that image, Dick, was it was Leo upside down, and we're looking no. at dinner? No, it's uh, Leo, uh, the tail star that you were looking at there, Dinabola. Uh So in other words, uh, north is is up, south is down. So it was, in that it was photo. like Leo was was standing on its tail. Oh, wait a minute. It might have been actually. Let me think about that. Yeah, because I'm going to know where where to look for the triplet. You know, and I. Oh yeah. Well, well no, actually, no. It, it is. I'm right. So, in other words, let me see here. Uh, I'm not sharing it anymore, but let me see if I can share that. Let's see if I can. How do you do that? Let's see here. Because huh. isn't Coma Bernices above Leo in the sky? Yes. Kind of above yes, the it tail. Yes, it is. It's kind of above it. Yeah. Well, I can't get back to that doggone thing and uh, have it do that. It's do. Oh, I know what I. I know what I got to do. This is what I got to do. Okay, here we go. Share screen. There we go. And most of the sickle was up at the upper edge of the. Of the <coughs> edge. Yeah. So yeah, there's Dinabola there. So basically, what you're looking at, I think, if we were to connect the dots, we'd probably go on like there's your tail, right there. So you're going up this way is going up to uh, Coma Berenices that way. No, there. no, no. Coma, Coma Beren Berenices is a cluster well, Coma, of stars. Excuse me. Coma is it? Coma, yeah. It's a cluster of galaxies, right? Well, there's, there's also an open cluster called Malop 111 that makes up most of Coma Berenices. And that's right there. Yeah. Down. This here? Yeah. yeah that's right yeah. there. Okay. That's what you were referring to. Yeah. And right. Then yes. The nebula is near the middle. But then right above it, you can see Zosma and Chertan, which are like the uh, the rear end and and uh, the you know the hind leg of the of the of the lion. Yeah. Mm. Uh huh. Yeah. But I really like this kind of stuff. You know. Um, let me see if I can get any galaxies in there. And I can maybe. Yeah, you're you're close to forty five sixty five in there. Ooh. Uh, you're getting a little coma distortion there. But that's quite enlarged too. I know I saw the trip. I, I could see the triplet. But I don't know if I can get in there or not and see it now or not. But it, it's it's definitely on there. It's kind of hard to navigate with this thing because you, oh, there it is right there. That's it right there. That's the triplet. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's the triplet right there. Oh. See, so I haven't even done anything to this yet. So uh, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, see what I can get. Uh, I like the uh, sunflower galaxy that came out really nice. I really liked it. You know, it's interesting to see the ultra wide field paying attention to galaxies because usually people do ultra wide fields for nebula. 
<laughs> yeah, well, I would be I, I'd be using uh, more magnification if I had it. That I guess would be my answer to that. I just uh -huh. don't have it yet. I, I'm working on it, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> What would the red cat do to that image? We, you'd have like a really, really wide field, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, you saw like what it did to Macarian's chain, didn't you? Uh, no. Did I? Yeah. Well, I think I showed it to you, but maybe I can bring it up again here. You can see it here. Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, gotta share the screen though. Maybe I better just keep it that way for a while. Okay, let's see. What was that one you wanted to see? Was the one on Macarian's chain? Uh, let me see here. Oh, wow. Um, okay. The eyes, the change. eyes. Yeah, that's what it is. The eyes, red cat. That's it. There you go. I think that's it. Yeah. So that's a red cat view of the eyes. See the eyes right there? Whoa. See, there's the eyes. And that was the one I was showing you. Um, you know, you got M100 up here. That, Holy that, that grand design mm -hmm. galaxy. That's a grand design yeah. galaxy. And it's that's one of those things. See, you can see what these things, when you take a big shot like this, you can see what all these galaxies look like. One, and you, then you know what your camera can actually do with these things to a certain extent. Um, you know, you can Whoa. see some of the interesting the things that you can actually see here. See, is that so, blown up with, with the red cat right there? Yeah, I just blew that up. I just blew it up. Holy mackerel! That's so you're you're looking at a field here that's probably about nine degrees on the long axis. So oh, that's nice. I, that's really good. Yeah, I I, I mean the, you can't go wrong with this thing. I'm telling you, you know. Look at that. That's unbelievable. Yeah, it is so amazing what this thing can do. It really What's is. What's the amazing. red? What are the red stars? Are those red giants or what? <laughs> Yeah, probably, probably, well, yeah, nearly red, red giants. So you got the star colors and stuff like that. I thought the NP-127 did a, a really good job, probably even in this particular case, maybe even a better job than the red cat did. But I think that the red cat, what's really neat about the red cat is it, it's just such a beautiful instrument in terms of getting all the stars in focus it, it is really something special man uh, i can't see. believe that you blow them up and it still has good focus yeah i know i know so here's uh the mp127 is version oh so you can see oh, wow. <laughs> lots of stuff lots of star color in that baby oh, lots of star color. yeah it's amazing. And look at the little rifts going through these galaxies and spiral arms are there. I didn't, I didn't get M87 as good as Bob did, though. M87, I think the jet is right in this location, somewhere in this area here. And I believe that the problem here, too, is you need to take a shorter exposure because the, the rest of the galaxy is just swamping out that jet. So, so you oh, need to take a real short exposure that would be a real good one for range compression i think you know to can take you bring the, it out with post-processing could you bring it out with post-processing uh uh i, I mean i'm gonna say no and the reason okay. why is you need to have the data the right way you got to have data with short enough exposure because otherwise you're just the other stuff is just going to swamp it out okay and, Okay. Yeah, I would say you need to have you, you need to have a shorter exposure, and that, that's what I really liked about uh, Bob's setup. There was that it addressed that very well with the short exposure. Uh, I, I really thought that 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 really kind of opened up uh, a light in my mind uh, as to what I was going to do with that. You know, when I get let's say the C14 would be real good when I get it, if that ever happens. Bob, what did you use on that? Did you do it? Was it the 11 inch uh, edge? Yeah. 
the Lebanon judge and with the ATAC, uh, ATAC it is um, the Horizon camera. And, yeah. uh, and, and I, I, I actually was amazed that given what I'd read about this in Sky and Telescope and how far it was to see, I was amazed at how much I could see and what I got. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. I was totally surprised. I thought, wow, I wasn't. I don't know how you see. guys do this stuff. It's it's fabulous. It's really, it's really something uh, special. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I I agree with what Dick was saying that I think a short exposure is probably the key. So I had a whole series of short exposures stacked. Yeah. It, it's amazing what you can do with the, with the range compression. And that's probably what I would do with that is I would take different exposures, you know, lesser and lesser uh, amount and then uh, form them into a composition and do it that way. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Fantastic stuff, you guys. I'm telling you. Yeah, everybody. So I tell you, yeah, we we are we are living in a day when we just just a decade ago we couldn't be doing some of this. You know, it is really amazing. I keep thinking about that. Like, wow, am I ever fortunate as an amateur to have at my disposal some of this very high technological stuff that we can do all of this? It's really it's really mm -hmm. amazing. I mean, it's just. And it's just going by leaps and bounds, and uh, it's it's, it's mm -hmm. really incredible. Yeah, I think what I'd like to try next time would be to get that that MP one twenty seven IS on that Antares region, you know, that I showed you guys with all the eye candy in there, and do a mosaic uh, with that instrument there. If I could get four panels with uh, twenty to thirty percent, maybe even more overlap. I could get that entire area like the Red Cat did with with the NP one twenty seven IS, and I, I would think that would just be an absolutely gorgeous target. Now, are you are um, you had another one twenty seven? You're getting another one that has the the bigger. Focus? I have two of them now. I've got Gary's, and I've got the I've got the IS version of Gary's. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. and and that's. Yeah, those are some picks, I guess, with that instrument right there. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know who it was I was talking with, but we, you know, I, I really like the Hale telescope, and I remember when they, the first images taken with that, it, it was, uh, what was, what was the name of that? Um, the it's, it, it looked like a comet, but it's not. That that was the first image taken with the Hale telescope. Hubble's and, variable nebula. That's what I'm going to say. Hubble's that was variable. Just, uh, yeah. Hubble's variable nebula. And, and the first image was taken with with that 200 inch. And look mm -hmm. at the stuff you guys are doing with these little cameras. Yeah. It just I know. It blows that well, away. Well, it's, it's interesting that you said that because the Red Cat picked up Hubble Hubble's variable nebula on one of my shots. I, I got I got a shot of it. And it, it's so funny because it looks like just like a little comment. The thing does. Yeah. yeah. It does. Yeah. I've got several images of it. But it wasn't that mm -hmm. long ago that they were doing. What is it? Nineteen forty-nine. You know, it wasn't that long ago that they were. They they had two two hundred inches focused on that, and now these little dinky cameras you guys got are just blowing that away. That's incredible. Yeah, all you the know? all the digital stacking going on too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's uh, the sampling. Well, the plus, plus that one you can see visually. I looked at that one from CalStar last month. Really. Oh yeah, you don't need a giant. You can see that with a eight inch telescope. It's What's a bright that? object. <laughs> and when I finish mine, I'll try. I'll check it out. <laughs> you could use what, your ten, and it would still work, Tim. Yeah, I know. I know. I'll tell Besides you one you thing. Tim, you're never going to finish that eight inch telescope. I, I it's it's like painting the Golden Gate Bridge. I know. <laughs> I don't think you even want to finish it. <laughs> the, the ten inch that I did. I finished that wood off with tongue oil. It, it's not even tongue oil varnish, it's tongue oil. I'll never do that again. It's beautiful stuff, tongue oil is beautiful. But in all, that, in all the moisture and all the heat of the day, it, it's just it, turned it to gum, it's, it's horrible. Yeah, yeah. I think, <laughs> I think poly, polyurethane is so much better 
And I, I love the guy at the paint store. He says, well, you sure you don't want ultra, don't you want some ultraviolet protection? And I said, it's a telescope. I'm using it at night. You know, I don't, I don't need the spar varnish, you know, but I didn't think about it during the day. It's sitting out in the, in the, in the sun all the time. So yeah, yeah, you, you do need it, yeah. <laughs> but it still was, fun, it, it was fun to tell them that. But, you know, Tim, you, but, Tim, you should put a coat of some other finish on top of the tunnel. Uh, I don't know if it, it'll. I'm I'm planning on on taking the whole damn thing apart and sanding it out again and putting something else on it. And I don't know if Polly's gonna. What you have to do is just test a little spot. That tongue oil is it's an oil. And I don't know if Polly would be able to uh, cover that or not without some kind a of. Lo a lot of times, what they do is they'll put a coat of shellac on it and then Polly on top of the shellac. Yeah, shell shellac that's that's great i've got uh, joe you'll like this i got a sanding sealer for this guitar and oh, yeah. all it is it's just a it's a watered down shellac it's always they just cut it with cut it more with what denatured alcohol that's probably what it is and tim, and, tim uh, you're gonna get in trouble with tom if you're talking about that guitar again unless no, you can isn't I'm, isn't there something <laughs> called the guitar galaxy <laughs> 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 yeah, you're gonna have to make a galaxy guitar. I'll have to make a piccolo. So it'll be a piccolo galaxy. <laughs> yeah, but the you know the finishes on all this stuff. It, God, I thought I thought it was gonna be a no brainer, but it's not. You really, you really should pick a really good finish because it's gonna it's gonna be on there a while, and, right, and not right, all the, the yeah. moisture from those dewy nights. God, it just oh yeah. It just, it's like glue. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, speaking of glue, Hank, that ETH 6000, that's yeah. good stuff. I use that on my 10 inch scope to put aluminum bars on the side of poplar wood. Right. It hasn't, it hasn't broken, uh, it hasn't broken loose yet. So, right, that's good. Yeah. That's some good. dentist told me once to, uh, the uh, uh, cohesion is two like similars glued together, and adhesion are two unlike. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And so the adhesion worked. That E6000 is good stuff. And it's it, and it it's, is good stuff. Yeah. And it's resilient. So it's gonna bend with any kind of like flexing and stuff. It'll bend and right. not get you know, Tim, a long time ago you recommended E6000 to me, and I used it on a secondary mirror assembly. Uh -huh. And I brought I brought it into the Broder building. And I was talking about how strong it was. And Jeremy picked it up and started pulling on it, going, I can break it. I got <laughs> He would, he would too. I had to Jeremy stop him. Great. I, I, I yeah, my, I just telling him ten... something that was strong was like a challenge. He yeah. was amazing. I, I built, I built my ten inch uh, scope with Jeremy, and that's it. There it is, right there. That stuff's amazing stuff. Uh, uh, and Jeremy w was out at UCSB, and uh, what it, it, was he in part of the MRL, Joe, or not? Yes, he was. And yeah. So his I office knew, was right across the hall from mine. And I knew he was doing something out at UCSB. And so here I was always telling this guy, Jeremy, that I was a genius. <laughs> and while I was building my, my 10 inch, you know, I was outside. We used all my tools. So we were out, out in my backyard for about, well, a year at least on the weekends. And here's Jeremy, a rugby player, coming up the, up the driveway one day and I heard him from the backyard, I heard a big crash and I went out to the front yard and he had dropped his mirror box with the mirror in it and oh. everything on the driveway. And he had, his right leg was in a cast. And I was going, Jeremy, what the hell are you doing? Or a soft cast. And he says, oh, it's just a little sprain. I'm okay. <laughs> and he picked this thing up and had all the weights in it and everything. The guy was a monster. And then, so I'd be telling him, you know, you know Jeremy, just what do you do out there at UCSB? And he goes, well, I'm, I'm going for my doctorate in physics. And here I'd be telling him that, that I'm the genius. And then, you know, one, one day we were sitting there and I said, I just don't understand. These numbers. How do you figure these numbers? And he rolled off with this. It's 0 0.6549. And I went, what? And he hands me his calculator and he says, just run these numbers. And it ran them 0 0.6459. And I was going, what the hell? What do you do out there again? <laughs> and he's, and he's like, getting my doctor. And that Joe told me one day, you know, that the guy's one of the smartest people out at UCSB. You know, but it, you, 
You know what he used to do all day long? He played Warcraft. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He also made beer, and I got the best part of that. He came oh, yeah. Over to <laughs> he came yeah, over but, to the back. But now, Tim, now you're in Santa Barbara, and he's in Kansas. I know, but I'd go there for that. But the last beer he brought me, he said, Tim, this didn't work out. There's just too much alcohol in it. And I said, pop that sucker open. And he <laughs> <laughs> one of the best beers I ever had. Well, isn't there a story that he got, he got hit by a car while he was jogging and the car came out worse? Yeah, I, I, I believe it. I really believe it. The guy was, the guy was really one of the gentlest. Did you guys know, you know, this is Jeremy been. Schmidt. Did you know that his grandfather was an astronomer of some moderate renown? No. He, he, he even had a catalog. And, but unfortunately, it was mostly in Taurus. And it became known as the Bullschmidt catalog. <laughs> <laughs> so is this a bullshit story or what? You decide. You know, I'm kind of glad that we're the, you know, I'm kind of glad that we're at the end of the evening. <laughs> Time for some I beer. Did, I did. <laughs> yeah. No, no kidding. He brought he'd bring this he'd bring these big jugs of beer over to the house, you know, and then that one day he brought it over and he said, What's all that cinnamon on the body? He said, It's on every bottle. He goes, But this one's a, I kind of blew it. And I think it was one of the best tissue ones that it had honey in it, honey wheat beer that he made. Oh, and it, yeah. oh yeah, I didn't even know who I Sweet was. Beer. I I love it. <laughs> yeah, did, Paul, did Paul Lynn ever tell you the story about when he took Jeremy up to Figaro Mountain and it clouded think, over. Yeah. Jeremy drank a bunch of, of uh, his Jack Daniels or whatever it was yeah. that he, and, and it rained and he got all sick and everything. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. On the drive, on the drive home, his head was leaned out of the car. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. You know, I got to <laughs> say that I really, there's, Jer there's Jeremy there. There he is. He, yeah, and and Jeremy just he's the nicest one of the nicest guys you ever. He really, meet. he's a great guy. He's a wonderful person. I I had the absolute pleasure of building my scope with him. We built side by side every weekend for two years, one year, whatever it was. We and we made the same the same mirrors uh, about f five point two, and uh, at the end of it, and of course Jeremy was so competitive that we went up to the gun club one time and he was asking everybody to come over and take a look through both of our scopes. He wanted to know whose was better. And you know, and, and there's this in, intimidating, intimidating guy that's built like an upside down triangle sit, sitting <laughs> next to a little short fat fella. That's me. And <laughs> not intimidating at all. But we ended up, he ended up saying that we, we tied. He, he took that telescope to... Uh, didn't he take it to Stellafane? Yeah. And and he either placed for the mirror, for the optics, it was either second or third that he that he mm. placed on the mirror. So our optics were pretty side by side, pretty good. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and at at least uh uh at eight at least an eighth wave and maybe twelfth. Something somewhere That's somewhere good. in there, eighth, eighth, twelfth wave. So it, it was it was good stuff and really fun to work mm. with him. And he wouldn't let you. He would. Mm -hmm. I, I had more. I had more inspiration from that guy uh, in getting that thing done. If he were around now, I'd be done with about three of these guys because he, he he doesn't <laughs> dilly dally around. He'll, 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 he'll get it done. I guarantee you, he'll get it done. So uh, anyway, guys, mm -hmm. I've had nothing but fun talking about all this tonight. <laughs> Uh, any, other, any, any other final mentions tonight of anything anybody want to bring up i, I just wanted to say that uh, maybe uh, how many of you guys know about the book pictorial astronomy that came out in the 1950s did any of you know about that no, book no. It's called pictorial astronomy no you you bruce you know i've never heard of it okay anyway i wish i'd kept the copy because that was the book in terms of great photographs <clears throat> the Palomar scope and the 100 inch scope, and there are just a lot of photographs. And uh, yeah, so uh, is okay. Is that the original one or is Pictorial. that a new one? 
Uh, so this is 1983. Oh, okay. So that's a subsequent. This one was first came out in, in uh, the 50s, sometime in the 50s. I got it when I was in high school. And I, I think so many times uh, the pictures there and these years later, and what we can get with much smaller scopes, we see we, we do a better job with infinitely smaller scopes than what they could do there. And it's, I always think, wow, what, what, what a change oh, uh, yeah. happened. Look at that stupid. Yeah, this is yeah, that Din, Din, That's incredible. Yeah, Dinsmore Altar was the go back to Dinsmore Altar. That's uh, it. There. Oh, that's it. Okay. So yeah. this this being updated. When did this one come out? 83, um, did they say? I think I saw something. Okay, like that. so it, it was updated then. Yeah, he was the original, he was the original author, but this was the 19. 19, uh, I don't know, came out in the 50s, 55, 56, maybe in the early 50s. But I would love to get a hold of that original one. I have to search around. Uh, you know okay, what? There's, so, I'm looking at uh, Amazon has one in stock. At that, uh, in, in the 50s? Looks the, like oh, it. OK. Used, used in supposed good condition. Oh, that's great. I don't get a hold of that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, 1983. Another one that's, was one, that's did really you show entertaining the one? Is, and it's probably out of print. It's just a little, it was a soft cover book called The Lighthearted Astronomer. It's pretty funny. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'll have to go on Amazon and see if I can find the used. I'd like to get that. I'm sorry I, I got, gave away, I gave it away or whatever I did. Did anybody anyway. see the, the satellites that came through? Uh, the, the key, uh, what was that? Some kind of a network of satellites? I think. What did they yeah, call Starlink. it? Starlink. It was a star Starlink. Starlink. Did anybody see that? Yeah. I didn't I've see seen it. those before. It's pretty weird. It is Somebody weird. Got, where you got like a number of light, like every, I don't know, I'm going to say yeah. maybe every 10 degrees or something like that. Yeah. Right. Hey, uh, like a cosmic wagon train. Yeah. Right. Listen, in, in the current in the current issue of Sky and Telescope, I don't mean to take it, but it's there's a whole article about this and the problems that they're proposing. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Starlink is just the beginning. And it just, I'm really disturbed and sad, saddened by this. Because this is just the start of multiple. Oh, that's one of the satellites. It's a big problem, and yep. this article really explores this. I, I encourage everybody to read it if you got some kind of scope or. I can't understand why they can't make these things so they don't glow. You know, I mean, if you get, is it sun cast that they're getting? So why can't powered? Make... Yeah, so they have solar panels. Yeah, so you can't do it. They just had to do one of their first avoidance maneuvers with another satellite constellation that's going up. I can't remember the name, but they, oh, they wow. that were on a collision course. And if those things collide when there's 40,000 of those suckers up there, we're going to have what's called the Kessler syndrome. It's, it's where you get a runaway collisional um, you know, chain reaction. Yeah, that's the domino effect. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, but, but even that. Yeah. But even when they, when they has to go into space. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. To get good skies, we have to go into space. That's what I think. Yeah, <laughs> I can just see it now. They're going to have billboards up there. The way yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, do. I always thought yeah. that'd be a good business yeah. if you could manage to dodge all that crap up there and pick up a little bit here and there. People be good pay to do it. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, it, it's well, a big, it. big problem, man. Nah. Yeah, yeah, that's the article, and that uh, really lays it out, and it's not a pretty sight. You know, that combined with all of the light pollution we've got, and now we got this. That's the end of and, it. And, uh, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's ironic moment. that we now have the cameras to take such a amazing yeah. picture, and then we'll use the, our same technology to screw it up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's the problem. So wait, yeah. now, Bob, which, which issue of Sky and Tell is that? It's you the current what? one. It's a June issue. 
the June issue. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, you know, wild. these survey telescopes that are looking for incoming asteroids are now going to have to filter out all of that crap. Yeah. 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 yeah it, it, I, it's just out of control. Uh, it, I don't know. I'm, I'm very irritated and bothered by all this. <laughs> Maybe it's easier to get rid of Elon Musk. <laughs> he yeah, listen. He's, he's just one of a man. I mean, the, the article yeah. pointed out. Yeah, if it weren't him, it'd be somebody else. No, they're multiple. Know. They're multiple nations getting involved in doing this. So, hey guys, need, good, need, good yeah. night. I gotta go. Me too. Yeah, okay. Not, yeah. All right. Good to see everybody. Late. It's time good to close out. Okay. All right, well, well okay. think positively about this somehow. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> we'll see you guys. See you guys later. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.